Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here and thanks for checking out my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell for new episodes. You can also find Shine Without Shame on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yes, and and from time to time I do we spirit spirituality and the word spirit being spiritual comes up on the podcast and I I just like to share with the audience from my perspective, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but from Tiffany's perspective, when I, when I talk about spirit or spiritual, and this does connect to what you were talking about, your, your evolution, um, is, is about those qualities, those virtues that we all possess. That really is the spiritual work in my mind. And that's when I, when I talk about spirit, yes, I I do think about being connected to the divine, to the creator and that connection then helps me to let go of maybe the shame or, you know, the helps me to reconcile or call myself to account for the missteps I may have, you know, taken that, that day. Right. I have a, I have a source and I have a place where I can lay my burdens down mm-hmm. and that connection because it's perfect. I'm not perfect, but it's perfect allows me to kind of every day I go to that connection and allows me to like, yeah, think through, reflect, how did I do today? How about that moment? Ooh, I don't know about that moment. Or, oh yeah, I'm really seeing that I'm improving in this area of life. You know, I I have a a practice, a process. And then when I go back kind of to out into the world, so to speak, those honing those and embodying those qualities, like you were talking about kindness and patience, it gets easier. I'll never perfect it, but it gets easier. And I think part of the, I have found personally that part of the process, I have to be able to let go of the icky stuff (laughs) that I'm holding on to about myself, about decisions I've made. It is hard. It is because you have to face yourself. But I, I find that if I make it a daily practice Mm -hmm. or something that's very frequent, it makes it easier. I mean, because the burden, then the pile never gets to be ginormous. Big, right. That's <laughs> trying that's to un- great, That's great advice, really. Ooh, trying to like shovel off that huge mountain every day. Oh, that's just too much. So, I if you keep if you keep it mountain. really small, yeah. a little molehill, <laughs> then, then it's it's manageable, it's right? Manageable. And then you're not having to go through that you know, th- the shame or or the you know, just the pain or whatever feelings that are all connected to all the experiences and the decisions, you know, it's just, I like to keep my burden light. I'm human. So the burden will (laughs) always sort of, there'll be a little weight on it always, but I don't want it to be so overwhelming that I never, that I'm too like paralyzed to even deal with it. Right. Right. And I think that's for me in, in my growth, one of the hardest things has been laying down the burden at somebody else's feet. Mm. And saying now it's yours, take it, because mm. it's it's um, you know I was raised a certain way, and it's I I I sometimes think my gosh my burdens are so small in the scheme of the world, who am I to ask for this, right? Who am I to ask for this? And I still I still struggle with that. I'm not going to say on a daily basis, but when I'm ready to lay a burden down or ask for help, I struggle with that. And I always start with um, <laughs> giving thanks in a way, because it's just like, okay, I'm going to ask for something, but you're, you know, please know that, that all the rest is great. Right. But mm. so that I, that's a struggle for me, but like you said, a little bit, the, what I'm learning to do is lay a little burden. Yeah. Just lay a little bit down. And then if it doesn't feel as bad, go, hmm, okay, so I can do that. Let me put another one there. <laughs> and hopefully we just won't have as many, right? That's right. Because things that don't need to be burdens won't become them. Absolutely, Gina. That's so wise. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and again, I go back to this concept of you as a successful business owner and leader in your community. I just think, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if all of these leaders, whether they're CEOs or or leaders in government, but if people say, could have these kind of conversations that we're having and, and and actually take 
you know, take action in their lives in whatever way. I don't, I'm not saying it needs to be a specific religion or a specific process, but, but it, it would make everyone's lives, I think, better. And, and, yeah. and, and then that affects the decisions we make out in the world about how we treat yeah. other people and the principles that we hold as our guiding principles. But if you're not doing that work, I just think, oh gosh, that's got to be the hardest of all. It's got to be hard. And, you know, being in a position to own a company, be the head of a company, it's, it's tough because who do you talk to? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, there's just, I had to lay down, I guess, my shame in seeking help, seeking that person to talk Mm. to, because I knew keeping it all in wasn't working. Yeah. Right. Cause the molehill was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And the mm. old record was playing much, much too far. And I would come in grumpy or leave grumpy or, I mean, I, I always said, okay, nobody, nobody really should talk to me after 4 PM. Cause I would get grumpy at about three, three thirty, and I'd get to a certain point, but by 4 PM, I mean, my staff wanted me to leave. Right. Cause I would just kind of, rrr, rrr. And I didn't have anybody to talk to. I had, I had thought about hiring a business coach, which mm. I have decided to do, but more on a business aspect of doing other business things, not personal coaching. Okay. And went down this road. I was going to look at a personal business coach or try guided meditation. And, you know, again, started with a guided meditation. I don't need the personal side because that's being addressed Mm. and I'm really happy about that but um that was hard to admit I needed it even to myself right then start doing it and I remember I didn't even tell my husband for probably a few weeks and not that I am hiding it from him but Mm -hmm. it just didn't come up in conversation and I eventually, I, he might have even asked me something. He might have even said, "Oh, you're in a really good mood today." He started complimenting my moods, mm. and um, and I think I said, "Oh, yeah, I've been doing guided meditations on Fridays." Well, I didn't tell him that there was a religious aspect to it because of the way he feels about certain things. And I had, you know, I just went down my own journey until I became comfortable. And, you know, one day he just saw that I was reading something, you know, and I was reading um, the book of Romans Mm. and he's like, what are you doing? And I said, I've never read this book. I've never read this book. And this book has been here for, I'm going to sound so dumb, but hundreds of years. I don't know how many I can't do that math that fast, but this book has been around for so long. It's been read by more human beings than have probably read any book in the world. And I've never gotten through a chapter. And there's been empires built and broken from this. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for me to read what everybody's, what everybody's reading. And that's what I started to do is, is, Mm -hmm you know, looking at that and he's just, you know, my husband, he's kind of his own guy and he's just like, well, I, I appreciate any journey you're on. And, you know, I just, I like how happy you are. So Hmm. it's good. Yes. That's so touching. (laughs) And to have that support, you don't have to hide yourself or, or the the next chapter of your evolution. Even if, even if, yeah, even if it was quiet for just, you know, a a short bit of time, because you had to, you were coming into it yourself, it's understandable, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a good place to be and a good partner to have when you don't have to, you don't have to hide those aspects of yourself. You know, for me, because we were, we were talking a a little bit earlier too, about the shame aspect of Mm -hmm. things, Mm -hmm. um, You know, I I guess uh, just saying it to you, I'm very gifted that I have that person I speak to once a week because if I'm feeling shame, I talk it through every Friday and I get a different perspective, right? So it's just, 
like you said, we need to talk more to each other. We need to, we do need to have more conversations that go past business and get more into the life. And what are we, and I don't remember who, where this came from, but there was a question going around and maybe it was somebody we know asking it, but what are we here for? What's the Mm. purpose, right? And when you really start to look at the purpose, my purpose isn't to design beautiful homes. That's my gift. That's the gift I have. And luckily for me, the way I get to make a living by sharing that gift and I get to give part of myself to every single job I do. So yay me. People like you that are also in this field of helping people heal, you give your of yourself all the time right so it's it would be great if we could just all talk more about who we are when we're not doing that or do you know what i mean I, that doesn't make much sense does it no i able to I, have those other conversations on the side yes <laughs> well yes and i will say though i think our purpose does act our real purpose as individuals there's a collective purpose, I believe, why our species is is here, but also individually, I, I think our real purpose does actually feed into every aspect of life. Like, mm-hmm. so yes, you're designing homes is is your passion and it is also your job, your your career. But I imagine that also feeds into other areas of your life that have nothing to do with work, right? Oh, yeah. Designing and I mean, a designer is a designer and yes, it can manifest in very physical in a physical way right. and uh, you can, you know, get paid yeah. for that. But uh, I imagine it influences your relationships, how you interact with people. And it, so, so I'm, I'm saying, yes, I, I like what you're saying, like to be able to have people you can come together with and talk about life, real things, things that matter. It doesn't always have to be serious, but right. to share who we are in all of our kind of facets as you know, you, you find yourself in spaces that are safe enough to do that. Right. Um, I think that's nice. I understand why people have like, okay, I'm going to b- belong to this association or I'm going to join this club or this group. I get that, but to be around like-minded people, yeah, like-minded people. But sometimes maybe, um, I find it hard to just pick one because I am so multifaceted. So multi- exactly. I exactly. need to be around people who are also multifaceted. Uh, right. and that doesn't mean anything, but just that you, you sort of look at the world and, and, and operate in different ways. It's like, it's not just say like an academic way, or it's not just, you know, uh, um, I don't know. One subject at a time. I know what you mean. Yeah. So that to me is very appealing. And, (laughs) and those are kind of my people like-minded and it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to do what I do for a living. It's just more about, you know, people who are authentic um, and, and helping to kind of cultivate that, you know, for, create those kind of small little spaces and community where people feel yes why they people feel that they can yeah can about it. Yeah. I have um in the in this area there's a lot of designers in San Francisco all the way to Carmel you know the this is a big hub of design and over the last couple years I have been creating relationships with other principal designers and we'll get together and have conversations Mm. and um the we always do personal stuff first but husbands families you know how's life that type of thing and then we talk business and i it, it, it was so refreshing to me how honest people were in this kind of a small situation where it's one or two of us to, you know, not one to get two, uh, two or three of us together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And opening up and just sharing information. And, you know, I was thinking of what you were saying, if we can get some of these CEOs doing the same thing, well, us little group of designer CEOs have done it. And it's really helpful because there's, there's highs and lows in everything. In, in the world, right? There's highs and lows in our work. And when you are somebody that owns a company and and rely on on your talent to make money and you know your your ebbs, ebbs and flows, your something starts to go down. I always think I'm the only one in California having a problem, right? 
Mm-hmm. I, it, it must be me. I I suck. I'm no good anymore. I'm too old. I whatever, right? I all those things start to go around. And then I'll reach out to the little posse who wants to have a drink and go talk about it for 30 minutes to find out, oh, they're feeling the same way. They thought they were the only one in California, just a little slow. And then two weeks later, we we are too busy to even meet, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's just, but it's, it's having that camaraderie um, where somebody's going to be honest with you about it and mm-hmm. be vulnerable and, and, you know, I've sat across from people that have looked at me and go, oh, my God, you're the most successful. You're really well known, blah, blah, blah. They wouldn't think I would have a a fear or anything. And it's like I have it every day. It's part of being a human for me is to get up and push past it, push every single day. And what makes me all the things I said earlier. Right. So. I think it's time for Tiffany to get into politics. Oh, wow. I've never heard anybody <laughs> say that. You're you're thinking local politics, I imagine. Well, but, uh, you know, <laughs> that's somebody an interesting... that can bring people together to have a, a thoughtful conversation. I thank you for the encouragement. I know that politics is not my calling, but I, I do. I do. Uh, I think as a coach and someone who likes to speak to people, yeah. I... I think in my own way, I do. And I do like community building. Oh, I just love it. I love it. I think there's nothing better than building trust with people around you who you, you on the surface have nothing in common with, but yet you, you do. And, and when you can get past that place of, okay, fear of like, can I trust you? Are you, are you, you know, you're, I know, Cause right? that, that seem it seems like I th- it seemed like we were sort of starting to open up more and more. And then more recently, people are really starting to close up again on trusting but people. That's kind um, of the COVID thing, don't you think? A yes. Bit and just, yeah, just, yeah, there's a lot of activity, a lot of, you know, um, strange internet stuff. Yep. Yeah, strange and pe- media, strange everything. Absolutely. Yeah. But, oh, when you can connect with a neighbor, or someone at the grocery store and just not that you have to share journal entries, but just get to know each other beyond the basics of hi, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. Because everybody has their unique combination of gifts, Mm -hmm. abilities, things that they contribute. Everybody has something they contribute to their community, whatever that community is. Right. 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 And, um, we need to get to know each other better and understand, oh gosh, you know what? There's so many people who can help really solve all the problems that we're mm-hmm. all concerned about while, while we wait. I mean, I don't think we should really wait for government officials or, or even policies to, ch- yeah. to change. That's great. Right. Eventually they'll get there. But in the meantime, right. I think we have, I think we have all the resources we need. It's just a matter of, you know, doing that building, but, oh, I love that stuff. I Mm -hmm. do. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I live somewhere where my neighbors, it's not important that we don't know each other. I mean, I am usually like the welcoming committee. I have, there's been a lot of new neighbors who have, who have moved in recently to my building and I always give a genuine smile and, you know, and welcome them. I don't try to get and I'm not nosy. I don't try to get into their business, but I just want yeah. them to know they're welcome. And I say right. that to them, but it's very rare for a neighbor around here to actually go out of their way to like, get to know me. I'm always willing to do that, but I don't want to be pushy. That's so, you. yeah. but it's, I, what I noticed, Gina, it's just, I mean, everybody, sure. Everybody has their own social insecurities or hangups, but it's right. just, it's also just not it's not a value that I think at least the people around here hold. I'm not saying that with judgment, but I just kind of no, am I aware. It's, I, 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 know I you say mean. that because I don't want to take it personal. I just don't, it's not important to well, them. I hear you. I mean, I remember um, going grocery shopping, right? What, something I barely do anymore, I have to tell you, which is, you know, a little <laughs> embarrassing, but, but grocery shopping was very social. Oh, yes. Because if you know if i when i grocery shopped in the town i grew up on i always would see somebody and, and you'd say hello how's your mom blah 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 
then I move away and I've got my profession. And I now live in this area and it's still, I'm in a shopping line and somebody's got something in their cart. I'll just say hello. And I'm not an extrovert. I mean, you, you see me in a situation where I, I'm talkative, I guess, because that's what I'm, I'm coming to do that. Mm-hmm. But um, socially, I'm, when I, I don't, I'm, <laughs> I go, I don't go to parties. Mm-hmm. I don't go to events. I've been really pushing myself over the last few years to start doing more of it. And I chose business first, going to professional events um, and just trying to become comfortable with being social like that and and feeling out of my element, though this is my profession, I just, I feel like the one, the one string that's out of tune. I -hmm. took that from a song. Um, But I feel like that a lot when I'm at, at social events and, and that's been, you know, part of my thing to, to push through it. But I would get that at the grocery store or picking up my dry cleaning or doing little chores that I don't do anymore because somebody delivers it to me. Mm. I order my groceries online. I get dry cleaning delivered. You know, it's <clears throat> kind of the automation of the things that used to make us social or put us in a situation where we're standing in line for 10 minutes for somebody to bag and ring our groceries you can't just ignore the person next to you, right. you know, you, you might as well have a conversation mm. um, or you're, you know, going to the dog store, whatever it is. But mm. I, I hear what you're saying because I feel it too. I, I feel what you're saying in I've been trying to hire and trying to find people that have um, a passion, a talent, a love and a social mm. that have the ability to inspire right? Because if you're going to make changes, and and that's what we do for a living is make changes, we've got to inspire that change. We've got to create and inspire it. And and a lot of people I do interview aren't excited. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if maybe that's what you're running into, or we're just, I keep wanting to say it's just the COVID thing, because I think it's gotten so much worse since then because there so many people got so used to being independent and alone Mm -hmm. and i think it went from being scary to comfortable to now almost scary to go back right so i I, I think we're seeing some of that and and at the same time i think people are also understanding it. I think a lot of people are seeing the same thing and starting to, at least I know people in my age group are Mm. starting to reach out even more to each other because Mm. it's so easy to disconnect. Yes, it is. It's it's easier to disconnect than to connect. That's a, that's a good point or to never make the connection at all in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, that's actually what I meant. It's, it's well, better. and I wasn't correcting you, but I was thinking yeah. uh, some people didn't even have it even connected. Right, um right. Yes. I yeah, no, I think you're right. I think there are a number of factors. Absolutely. I've lived in three major US cities. Mm-hmm. And so, and I've always lived in apartment built, well, not always, but in those cities I I have at least at once lived in an apartment building and so I well, I think I lived in New York. I lived in Chicago. I lived in San Francisco and the Bay just Area. Ask and you, which so, three? How was? Did you find one of them more social than another? I found New York to be the most social. I know that there is the perception that New Yorkers are cold, aloof, not wanting to connect. I think that is part of the culture. It's a veneer, though, and I've heard New Yorkers say this as well. Like nobody has time. Like get out of my way. I need to get through to the subway. I need to move. Don't, you know, don't right. mess with my time, time. It's like respect equals time in New York. Um, yeah. but I, but in a pinch, if you need help, if you're on the subway, if you're somewhere out and about and you need directions, you, New Yorkers will stop. I mean, maybe not every you. single person, but they will but stop and they will help will. you. They sort of take pride. Like, oh, okay, you need my help, you know, but it's like, <laughs> I found them to be the most, oddly the most social and even, even at times the most friendly Mm -hmm. and no shade on Chicago. It's just, it's a different, they're different regional cultures. Right. Well, and 
I found it harder to connect to people in Chicago, unless I was yeah. out, out at a party or something that's right, different, right. but, um, and then San Francisco. Oh, I, so I went to college in, in San Francisco and I graduated yeah. in the late nineties. Okay. I love to say I graduated last century and, uh-huh. <laughs> and then I was gone for 11, 12 years and I'm, and I came back to the Bay area. So it's been like almost another 12, 13 years. I've been back in the Bay area. Yeah. So when I was in college, everybody was social. It was fun. And that was just, those were, that was the environment. But, uh, but since I've been back, I found a reserved vibe that I didn't remember or just didn't yeah. experience. I find it so hard to socialize with people in the Bay Area. I mean, even when you're out somewhere where people are supposed to be social, social. I went to a museum. You know, museums will have like that, you know, third third Thursday we had they have like young adults or adults and they have right. cocktails and music and I went to something like that this was a few this was probably seven eight years ago but I went with some friends and we were in actually a little lecture hall listening to somebody and I was just like you know I really I need to socialize I hadn't been socializing much so I I, I told my friends I'll catch you guys later and I stepped out there are like 2,000 people at this museum and people have dr- I don't drink but still like i I know when people drink that it's usually an opportunity to get them to talk. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Gina, I could not get one person to chat with me. They would just sort of kind of, you know, I was trying to start up a conversation. They would just look at me and oh maybe gosh. they'd kind of, it wasn't that they were rude. It wasn't rudeness necessarily, but it was just like, they just weren't interested, not or open to, or yeah, yeah not. So and I've spoken to other people who have spent time in the Bay Area or who, uh, you know, uh, yeah, have lived. And I just find, I, I find that I find it very hard. Uh, and I, I'm, just- I'm less extroverted than I used to be. I used to be way more extroverted. But I think as I've done more healing work and self-awareness work, I become less extroverted. But there That's still is a I'm yeah. very but when it comes to like social environments, I can definitely turn that on. Like I am yeah. very comfortable being um social. outward you're the person you're the person i hope to meet at events oh yeah oh i would love she i love that idea up and randomly starts talking to me and then i wouldn't let you go oh i, I love that like, oh someone's talking <laughs> that's a dream a dream scenario for me Let's a drink and have a conversation <laughs> yes um yeah so it's been yeah it has been interesting living in different areas um but everywhere i've lived I've always tried to just connect with people, you know, yeah. I mean, again, I'm not saying we've got to get on the deepest of levels, but beyond just the superficial high. Right. And not every person, sometimes you just get the sense, okay, there just probably isn't going to be a connection here, but I just find it more and more we are of a reality that people just aren't less. open, you I know, we're just communicating less. I think so. We're and texting, I, I heard that. Somebody was, I think it was a news thing I was listening to or one of the radio shows that was publishing updated text things so us older people would understand what was being talked about. And there was, I'm not going to get it right, so everyone's going to laugh. Text, text, they combine the word text and relationship, textationship or something, meaning that people will have relationships that are mostly based on text conversations. Mm. That's Interesting. odd to me. Yes. I mean, it's like, oh, okay. I mean, I like to text people that I, I mm-hmm. get communicating. I love mm-hmm. how fast it is. And I, I am a direct communicator. So I like that aspect of it. But I don't like the aspect of our younger people dating that way mm. or, you know, the socialization because it's just going to make it harder and harder for people to look at each other in person and, and have a conversation but that's a whole nother podcast isn't it i yes it is <laughs> but i appreciate your concern and i think that things like the pandemic i'm not trying to be doom and gloom but i think yeah. that things like the pandemic will continue to happen i i believe sort of as like tests yeah. for us you know it's like a test like can yeah. we come together can we cooperate can we help each right. other out globally locally nationally and how long does it i mean how long does it take to do it? Right. So right. I, and I just think 
we're going to find I think we're I just have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to find ourselves more and more in situations where because of circumstances and emergencies and you know resources being scarce we're going to have to rely on each other more and how can you do that if you haven't at least been working on those basic connections exactly and so I either way look at I have I have faith in humanity. So either way, it's just, we're just kind of going about it the harder way. We'll still get there. Uh-huh. We could just be fast tracking. <laughs> I, I like, just, e- I like efficiency. Yes. We could be fast tracking the process of mm-hmm. getting, you know, those, those muscles ready for socializing and connecting and reaching out and help, trying to rely on each other's gifts right. and talents. So right. we'll get there. But, uh, until then, I'm so grateful to have conversations with people like yourself because it's a reminder that there are so many bright spots in the world, you know, and there are so many people who are doing their best, who are trying to evolve, at, who are wanting to be a part of something good, even with all of our imperfections, yes. you know, no one's right. perfect, but it's a, such a good reminder and such a hopeful reminder to me that there are people all over who are trying to connect and, and move us forward. Mm -hmm. That is something that it's a concept that I, I, I appreciate that this idea that we're, we all have an opportunity and we're all worthy to contribute to an ever advancing civilization. So that that sounded so good to me. Well, That's I didn't make it up. Line. Oh, I was going to say you this comes actually from my this comes from my faith. Uh, so it's from sacred writings of my faith. So I I cherish it as a guiding principle. But it's it's I think that's what you know those those of us like you, myself, Crystal, who you mentioned, and and all the other people who we are able to connect with, yeah, uh, in ways that are real and authentic. That's what we're all I think probably trying to do trying to do exactly trying to contribute to something to help us all move forward so thank you so much for being a part of this the convert the conversation and and making time for this conversation and i i just wanted to ask it was it were there any final thoughts or words of encouragement or insight or wisdom that you want to share with the audience before we wrap up gosh i yes i do um I don't, I I can say so many things. I'm just going to say, you know, today is today and tomorrow is going to be even better. Right. I just, and um, think good thoughts. Think, think this is something I love to do. Here's an exercise I'm going to share with people. When you see a stranger, make yourself think three good things about them and then go on to the next stranger. Hmm. Three good things. Just oh. find three good things. And you're, I will, I, I feel that I'm a semi-normal human. And I had said to you earlier, lots of negative thoughts, right? I feel that that's somewhat normal human behavior, or maybe I'm just a little crazy. But what I have found is doing that one exercise helps connect, helps me connect with how I want to be, how I want to think. It helps take the negative narrative out of my head. It helps me see a stranger completely different than the way I saw them a second before when they could have been just an annoyance because they're in the crosswalk where I'd like to drive through. And instead, now they have beautiful hair, a great pair of shoes, and an incredible smile, right? So I think I'm going to keep it that, that simple to, to leave on that note, because just think of what beautiful things can happen if we all did that three times a day. Oh, that's wonderful. Strangers. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. And I, before we actually, oh yes. yes. Well, before we actually end, I want to ask one last question. This is something I ask every guest before yes. they leave which television show new or old do you recommend and why and it doesn't have to be your favorite but maybe it's something you're watching now or something from the past 
Oh. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to go for it. If somebody hasn't watched The Chosen, I think they should. I don't think I know that one. So it is, um, it's biblical. It's, it's from a company called Angel Studios. And they, it's a movie. It's, I shouldn't say, it's a series. Mm. It's a series. I don't want to spoil it. People just need to look it up. But it's, you can download the app Angel Studios. You get to watch it for free because people donate money. Um, and you can either choose to donate if you want to or not donate. Um, it was somebody recommended it to me and I started watching it. And it was just interesting. The path I'm going down with Crystal, uh, you know, and this movie, there was not movie series. It's it's really, really interesting. And what I love is the company. It's all crowdfunded. And then when you go to watch it, they give you an opportunity to say thank you to the person who paid for your viewing or not. It's up to you. So it's a play it and pay it forward type of thing. And there's a lot of content in the series that speaks to so much of what we've talked about today. That that would be the one I would leave people with. Thank you. The Chosen. Mm -hmm. The there's Chosen. Three Two, two seasons have already fully dropped wow. that people can watch. And I think there's a third season in production. And okay. It's and it's, okay. it's real, real actors, real, really well done. I, I'm just so surprised it's crowdfunded. Okay. And to clarify, the only way you can watch it is through the app. It's not on any of the streaming platforms. Is that right? I did find it on, I think I found part of it on Netflix, but I couldn't go current. Oh, okay. So I was able to get some of the, some, I think season one on Netflix, but you couldn't go current. Okay. So you can, what I learned to do is just download the app and I cast it to my large screen oh, and I watch yes. it that way. So, so I can watch it. And it's been a very educational, eye opening, heartwarming, uplifting thing to watch. That seems sounds like a good recipe for so, these days. I want to try. Exactly. It's all feel good. Mm. I think it is. But you'll see. You're going to watch it, aren't you? I might. I to, Truthfully, it will go on the list, but it may not be high up. I have so many, so things. many things. And they keep. I keep reprioritizing <laughs> based well, on would... kind of where I'm at in life or my mood or what I, you know. Okay. So, But I, I will put it on the list. Absolutely. What's, what's your go-to right now? I, well, very currently, this is not high minded, uh, necessarily subject, uh, subject matter, but That's I have okay. been, I have been watching succession, but I have a, I have a film production background. So I watch that show because it's got incredible acting and writing. And I just, I find it fascinating how well it's it's produced. So I, I appreciate it for a lot of different things, not just entertainment, just, you know, as like right, something right. I go watch to watch, but I, I tend, this is going to sound, I don't know. This makes me sound like I'm super young, younger than I am, but I am on YouTube more than I am on any other platform because there are just so many different many. things going on. And, you know, once you watch one, they recommend something similar or the next one. My I watch My podcasts son, and I, YouTube. I thought, I know I was like, I think it's, this is, this is something that like teenagers do, but I, that's okay. I'll include myself in that, in that group because that's just, where I spend most of my time. It's just, I listen to educational. I listen to doctors. I listen to podcasts. I listen to comedians. I, yeah, it's just the most varied. Uh, and I don't know why, but I just gravitate toward it. My, so my husband does the same. Okay. So, so it's not just, just me. That's it's the older, the older uh, crew. Well, you're, uh, you're a high techie older crew, even though I, you're not old. Um, I'm more of a low techie older mm. crew. So I don't, I think it's cool that I can still take the remote and turn on a television <laughs> without walking over to it. But um, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. That's the one about, is it 
kind of loosely loosely based on the Murdoch Rupert Murdoch's family so the media mogul family it's really it's just for if you have not even peeked at it just be warned that uh and people who are listening who have watched it will know that the way that these family members and and just the way the characters speak to each other is really really awful sometimes it's really harsh it's really against anything we've talked about <laughs> again it's not like the most high-minded you know uh art in in the sense of subject in terms of subject matter but in right. terms of production value wowzers it is amazing and yeah i'm i'm always in awe of something that's really well done uh and and everything is always kind of there's a there's a decent bar for quality but then there's things that just go a little bit above yeah. because of the storytelling the writing so yeah that's in, it's but yeah i think it's see it's different it's, perspectives of it too right it's not just the content it's the, no i'm watching it's editing i watch it. exactly i watch everything yeah. i mean there are times where i'm just you know if i'm tired i'm just kind of just passively watching but most right. of the time i'm watching every as many aspects as i can but uh but i think for entertainment's sake it's it's worth watching for sure okay i'll put well, that on my list okay okay <laughs> Gina, thank you again for making time for the conversation. Thank you. thank you for having me. I really appreciated our conversation and you're just easy to talk to. Oh, I'll, good. I'll chat with you anytime. I feel the same. Likewise. Thank yeah. you. And thanks yeah. for sharing about your journey and your evolution and all of your insights. <laughs>